can't handle the truth. It's a level of success where it's a door. It's a door. You platinum and you getting 50000 a show? I've been there. There's a door that you can walk in. I'm not sure if it's homo or if it's Illuminati. I just didn't take that though. I went what, straight. What you... There's three different ways to walk. There's to the left. There's to the right. And then there's straight. Straight is your own, your own. Let's see if you continue this success, young man. See if it was all about your skill. To the right? I'm not sure if that's the homo shit right there. And then there's to the left. I'm not sure if there's some sacrifice shit going on right there. But I was offered these doors. He made, made it that far. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So there had to be some sort of evil influence. Right. Or the devil is involved. Right. See what or they he sold his they ass. Say, what they call that? He, he sacrifices all. They, they Why do you still do it? Why are you still out here? Well, it goes back to the destiny thing. I, mean, I made a bargain with it, you know, a long time ago. And I'm... Holding up my hand. What was your bargain? To get where um, I am now. Should I ask who you made the bargain with? <laughs> with, 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 you know, with the chief, uh, chief commander. On this earth? <laughs> and on this earth and in, uh, and then in a world we can't see. Look at music that you've written and look back at it and say, whoa, that mm -hmm. surprised me. I used to. Uh, I, I, I don't do that anymore. Uh, I don't know how I got to, to write those songs. What do you mean you don't know how? Well, those early songs were like almost magically written. Um, uh, darkness at the break of noon, shadows even the silver spoon, handmade blade, a child's balloon. Try to sit down and write something like that. Uh, th there's a magic to that. And it's not uh, Siegfried and Roy kind of magic. You know, it's a, it's a different kind of a penetrating magic. I did it at one time. I sold my soul to have a life that I wanted. And it took me to my adult years or leaving home where I could really, really try on something different for myself. That was Satanism. It's working out really well. Uh, uh, it's, we, I made a pact. That's why the movie came out so well. I signed a, a deal with Satan in my room. CBS doesn't condone no. this in any way. Wait a minute. <laughs> because I wanted to get famous no matter what. And, you know, then I forgot that I had this deal with Satan and everything. And then I got really famous. If your ultimate goal is to be famous, then you're going to do a lot to, do, to get there. Like sign your name in blood in a contract with the devil. There's no artist, let me be clear, there's no artist in this industry that's doing major numbers with these platforms that haven't sold they sold and when you, when you know what you're looking at and you know how to decipher shit you will you know you will see it like the brother right here who has his merch and is doing it out the trunk and direct to consumer you will never get to that 20 million dollar club <laughs> without but, going through certain doors but but I the point of this story is she really wanted to be famous and she met somebody um who could promise her that and he was like i know how to make you famous and she's like how and he's like we can turn you into anything we can turn you into a singer an actor whatever you want one day he visited her, her apartment and he was like in a suit and tie and i came in and i saw him in the suit and then she's like please leave and she and she closed the door on me so i left and she came up to my apartment fucking sobbing. And she was like, this guy, please, you cannot repeat this. And for, for three years, I held the story to myself because I thought this guy was going to kill me. But they were like, if you ever repeat this, they'll kill me and they'll kill you and they'll kill anybody that you love. She was like, this guy came to me. He's like, I can turn you into anything you want to be, but you have to sacrifice somebody. And I just spoke to my mother and my mom. My mom really supports me and she's like willing to be sacrificed <laughs> so I can become like famous. a singer or whatever, famous, whatever. <laughs> And she, this was completely serious, and it was really fucking terrifying. Like you believed her, totally believed yeah. her. Jay Z. So so. Remember that thing they said they gave they had to give up somebody very close to them that that you got to oh, sacrifice yeah, that, that, somebody. That, 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 look at everybody. Look Jay Z. Oh, oh, 
Um, who? Who? Uh, his nephew. Yeah. Eminem, Eminem, his uncle. His uncle. Yeah. Um, proof. Proof. Two. Proof. Eminem. We made the video. Joe pun. Man, Joe pun. That's what they say. I'm just. Superstar Kanye West is mourning the death of his mother today. The plot thickens in the mystery of what killed the mom of Kanye West, Dr. Donda West. The toxicology results were released this morning, and her exact cause of death is shockingly still unknown. It appears she had a heart attack as a result of the multiple compl complications from the uh, post-surgery. How did things go south so quickly? He is the physician who performed surgery on Kanye West's mom eight years ago. She died the next day. You're known as the doctor who killed Donda West. Determined to rebuild his battered reputation by revealing what he says happened to Donda West. He's calling on Kanye to clear his name. Kanye West can end this by telling the truth. And what do you believe that truth is? The doctor had nothing to do with his mom's death. Donda West survived the surgery very well. She was at home. Did anything during that surgery go wrong? No. Were there any complications during the surgery? No. Was there anything prior to the operation that gave you pause about operating on this woman? No. I sold my soul to the devil. I know it's a crappy deal. Lisa came with a few toys like a happy meal. She's like this icon that has just continued to shake up the pop culture scene for years. But all of that stuff she stole from another female artist, Lena Morgana. She was working with Lena. She was writing her music and she was singing backup on a lot of her tracks. And Lena and Lady Gaga, they became frenemy. Lady Gaga's first like studio debut album called The Fame, that came out in 2008. But that same year, Lena Morgana at 19 years old fell off a building in New York and she died. Some reports say that they saw her jump, but there was also a suspicious report that they saw someone push her. Lady Gaga released the fame in 2008 before Lena's death and it flopped. But after Lena threw herself off of a roof. Lady Gaga re-released her album under the title The Fame Monster and that's how we all got to know her. There were no talks of Lena Morgana's death until four months later and even then in the article they didn't even mention her name they just said it was a girl from Staten Island. Yeah well sometimes they don't want to and they're you know Gaga we can't get you know the, the frequency's weird and you know it's sounding a little bit strange and I'm like if you don't get this right now I swear to Lucifer I'm gonna you know I get a little bit. You've had three conversations with the judge to make a fair decision I think you have to be aware of both sides and I was approached so of course I had a conversation it didn't mean I, it doesn't mean I rode with him sure. or believed him I just was able to recognize him by what he said to me and what he offered me said, oh now I know you are that's why I stopped talking to him I'm fit out seven albums but he's only on three then I met the devil in God's country it's not so much who it, it's what you know what happens and, and the things that the devil does it's not so much a person even though he he acts through people you know you can't call any one person the devil you can't do that because no one person has enough power to be the devil you know not today but about a week ago I sold my soul I had to do it because I was trying to make it like you feel me I could have sacrificed anybody, but like, but when you sell your soul, you gotta sacrifice someone that you really love, and, and you get anything you want. You get to be rich. You get to, you get to be, you get to have fortune. You get to, you get to have everything, everything you ever wanted. You feel me? But you can think I'm cap. I'm not tripping. No, because I feel like we got we to gotta put it out there. I had like two record deals, right? Mm -hmm. And they wanted your butt? Yeah. Let me be clear, right? Nah, because it's not even funny. I'm keeping it real. Just like I've heard certain sh I've heard certain shit about certain... I've heard some of these executive... I ain't going to call names. I've heard some of these executive niggas is like homosexual. Despite people coming to me and be like, yo, blah, 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 try to fuck me. Like, he actually like dudes. Bro, I'm st like I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt, bro. That's how it works. Probably until I see a, which I don't want to see a video of him fucking another nigga. I still won't believe what everybody keep telling me. Might be like, yo, everybody knows he's gay. And I'm like, nah, he not gay, man. I, I was watching this nigga from a little kid. Like, nah, he was getting all the bitches. No, bro, he's literally gay. He tries to fuck everybody who gets out. Nah, bro, I ain't believing that. Y'all all say it's all known within this circle. I haven't seen like too much of a loud. 
um, presence of people saying that publicly. Who this? Why Top Dog don't do that? Maybe some of the artists, they're on some other shit. And we just have to admit that. You know, he could be a phenomenal rapper all he wants, but like, listen, you know, part of rap is actually, you know, bearing your soul. That's part of art, expression, artistry. Land of Hollyweird? Like, don't ever think none of this shit is like just too weird for you. There's, there's a couple executives that I be hearing that are f the male rappers. And they're male too. And I've been saying, how come he keeps sucking these niggas off and nobody talk about this? But because I don't want to get just randomly killed, I won't mention them niggas' names either. This whole music industry is like, it's, it's one big, it's one big game where like, everybody know, like, everybody know what's up and everybody knows the finesse, but no one's supposed to talk about it. When you talk about it, you're fucking it up. Like, like, you ever hear me talk about everyday struggle and everybody just look like, what do, why is he saying this? Like, yo, who let him in? Who told him the secrets? Why is he snitching? Like, it sounds like I'm snitching because everybody's like, this ain't supposed to be known. What they do with the artists is easy. They send the stylist at them first. Yeah. Yep. And if the stylist is like, if the stylist report back and be like, oh, he ready, then they invite you to the party. And that's when they be like, yo, look, when you go in here, it's going to be some, you know what I mean? They proposition you. They do things indirectly. Like they might send a stylist at Ooh. you to tell you, listen, homie, we ain't doing that. <laughs> or they might invite you to a party and there's no bitches there. It's a sausage party. Yeah, you can't, you can't make it to the real party because somewhere, if, you, if you're if not a homosexual, they got they got a filtering out process. I miss this is his birthday with party. Puff, man, man I but I'm talking about for your birthday. Huh? Why won't you party with me for your birthday, man? I, I, we we party for my birthday before you came to my party. Man. No, but me and you ain't never really party. You know what I'm saying? Me and you ain't never really party. You know what I'm saying? My said the same thing that they that. went to a, a mansion party yeah, yeah, yeah. and then it was niggas running around no, in there. Definitely. Motherfuckers be gay in Hollywood. You never fucking expected. They be having these big ass mansion parties and the mansion party, the whole mansion is a party and then it's a separate party in the little rooms. I ain't been famous that goddamn long. I'm excited in a motherfucker to be at the mansion party. You be looking in all the goddamn rooms and you fuck around and look in the wrong room and shit. Is that two niggas kissing? <laughs> is one of them niggas Professor Ovi? The devil's job is to get as many souls as possible. So if you got the potential to be influential, they want you. Not because you're talent, because they could use you as a tool to push their agenda. Now, in order for them to fully put you in position, they have to make sure that you're willing to get in position. And that position is taking <laughs> in ass, bro. Next thing you know, you get invited to the party where the greeting is the man squeezing your dick. But instead of a professional meet and greet, Cruz claims Vinnett leered at him from across the room. And he looked me in my eyes and he was sticking his tongue out overtly sexually to me. I mean, it was no mistake that this was a, a, a sexual type tongue move. And I'm going, and I'm thinking it's a joke. I'm thinking, is this how this guy breaks the ice? I reach my hand out and he, he takes his right hand and under mine and immediately squeezes, grabs my genitals and just, and I'm jumping back like, hey, hey, mm -hmm. whoa. And he go and he still, and he jumps back and he still does this tongue stuff. And, and then he comes back again and grabs me again. And selling your soul is not some prick in your blood, you know, you're in shit. No, mm. motherfuckers is taking your ass. Yeah, because they need something to hold over your head. What? A nigga that's a square, he don't know. Yeah. So he don't know, watch your drink. He don't know. So now he drink behind a nigga. He get, he get drugged. They this nigga. They, they, they this nigga. Videotape it. Then when he in the meeting, they give him a shitty contract. They play the video of him getting by like three niggas. He ain't never been doing shit like that. So he like, man, what? Fuck it. I'm just going to sign. Are you going to give me money? So rather, rather than get... That story put out, he gonna sign that bad contract. Oh, the door, the Nori door, the door, the door. Wack is one of the most dangerous niggas in the music industry. Wack 100 was allegedly, but I got the audio, was extorting Nipsey Hussle. Wack 100 had sex tapes where he was blackmailing Nipsey Hussle because Nipsey Hussle was running a, a train on his baby mother and started giving her a kiss after his man <laughs> in her mouth. I've been saving his career, bro. Nipsey got dead shit on him, bro. Yeah, we got all the footage. 
The nigga even had a sex tape on Oscar De La Hoya. Mr. I started De La Hoya. Them pictures is up, nigga. I Get said it on my first podcast. What you talking about? Nobody going to trust hey, me. Hey, bro. Hey, bro. I said it on my first podcast. I made 800. I said it. What do you mean? The pictures is up. The video ain't up. You fell. The video didn't go up. You fell. Did you see the recording for yourself? What record? What are you talking about? I'm recording. The whole thing with Nipsey. I'm just asking. Did you see yeah, it I didn't see it a hundred times. Somebody 13 clips. Yeah. I didn't see it a hundred times. Think yeah, about yeah, it, though, bro. Yeah. It's, it's not, like, no disrespect, bro, but it's in this game that's sucking to get on. Now, me, you can't never do nothing else because these because they got that over your head. Let me, let me ask you something. Um, me, we got I, you on video sucking a hundred. <laughs> how can you ever say anything about us? If you're in the industry, the devil, the devil, they, like, Illuminati, all that shit, they try to get you. What are some of the ways they do try to mm. get to a person of oh, that oh, magnitude? Oh, let me tell you. Let me tell you, what they do is they invite you to these parties, these house parties, and then they they be like, oh, Woop the Woop going to be there, like your favorite rapper. They might do some gay shit to somebody and then, and then, and then like, and then like try to like and record it and tell them, oh, if, if you, if you expose us, we're going to post it everywhere. And I know that from word of ear. I think it's a lot of gay. Rappers out popping. How do the rappers you're gay and they don't admit it? 95 is sitting on his closet cases. I know the ones was on our label was like that. He said he's gay because there's a guy named Bruce and they've been sleeping together for years. Uh, Tupac stood up and said, I'm tired of this, I'm tired of this. Dre, you the f He said, I'm not a homosexual. He's I'm meeting. bisexual. I'm a bisexual because I like to get my cheekbones blue out. I like to get pounded in the butt. Bringing us into the inner workings of a record company. A lot of people aren't used to this. That I just think motherfuckers do that shit in order to sell records. Motherfuckers sell their goddamn soul. He sold his soul for everything. Sold his soul, period. Yeah. You were almost his wife? Yeah. Really? I want to get out this music industry because this is not for me. But I do it because I feed my family. But I don't want to be in this. This is not what God want me to do. God don't want me to do this, but I do it to feed my family. And I want to get out this. I want to get out of the, the music industry because, yes, you go through pain. You go through, you go through this because this is what the devil wants you to go through to destroy yourself. The devil wants you to go through this to destroy yourself. I'm a very good girl. I used to go to church all the time, but now I never have time to go to church. I used to be an altar girl. This one guy, he broke my heart, and I was like, cool, thanks. I was like, now I have to do something pretty ridiculous and insane with my life. So why not sell my soul and go on Jersey Shore? Most of the people in this business struggle to get in the business. Mm -hmm. So when they do get it, and they get there at the gate, and like I said, in this business, in, in order to get to point A and point B, you have to go through some certain uh, 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 red tape. And like I said, there's guys mm -hmm. standing there at the gate. I don't even know who these die. niggas are. Who are these gatekeepers? All the, all the, rich, all the ones that get opportunities back to back to back. That's that's rich a hundred times. That won't. That's greedy. The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist. You're living in a world that's corrupt, in my opinion, corrupt by the devil, and the devil's very strong at the moment. Yes, Jesus Christ is my saviour. God is with me, me you. nobody can be against me. And I want to say thank you to my Lord and saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. I said those who bring evil against me will not prosper. I said those who stand in the dark can never come into the light. All praise be to the one and only true God, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Please subscribe.
with notifications on.